Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, finally it is here and we're talking about the in-depth review of the world's first indoor computer monitor that's using the reflective LCD technology. We're talking of course about the Sun Vision Display's 32-inch RLCD indoor computer monitor. This was probably the most difficult review and most demanding review that I have had to do up to date, simply because I understand the importance of the new technology, the high price of the device, and uh, just how new and specific the technology is demands a lot of attention and a lot of details for people to actually understand what it is, what it is not, and all of that kind of stuff. All of those reasons are the reason why it took such a long time to actually get to the in-depth review, because as you will see, I have done a lot of testing. So without further ado, let's start with the in-depth review. So let's start with the overview of the device. This is a 32 inch reflective LCD computer monitor. So that means that it doesn't have any backlight, it doesn't have any front light, and the technology itself means that it is capturing as much as light as it can from your environment and then reflecting it back to your eyes. Uh, and that has a very positive effect to power consumption and the overall health and the overall approach, as you will see, to your daily life and how you use a computer monitor in your day-to-day -day life. This is a 32 inch, as I said, at 1080p, running at 60 hertz or 60 frames per second. It has only one HDMI in, so no USB-C, no display ports, no nothing, no two HDMIs, just one, that's all you get. Uh, it has a power in, of course. It does have a built-in foot stand, which um, kind of pivots and that works rather well. Um, however, the holes on the back are not Visa compatible holes. They're just some kind of standard so even if you were to force it that you don't because you will break it if you attempt to mount a visa on it you will break the monitor so don't try that um, there is a section where i'm going to offer the link and you will actually see that there are uh, adapters that can be used and they can be tested and that's something that svd shows on their website as well so i encourage you to check that out after the review has no speakers doesn't have audio pass through either the ability to actually hook up an external speaker to it or something like that and it doesn't have a USB hub and it costs or it used to cost $1,549 and then the price was bumped to $1,799 with currently running a discount for $1,679. So on the paper of things, things are already looking weird because you get a 32 inch screen running at 1080p at a very good 60 hertz, but it has only one HDMI, is not Visa compatible, does not have a USB, doesn't have audio capabilities, and it costs as much as it costs. Is there any point to actually even discuss this and consider it? Well, yes, very much so. There are a lot of good reasons to actually take us very serious consideration into um, this product. First of all, it being the reflective LCD computer monitor. That thing alone is the one that actually justifies all of the other um, yeah, negatives that you might actually perceive. So let's expand a little bit more about the reflective LCD technology, what it is, just so that people can understand what we're talking about here, because it's a relatively new thing. So in the standard LCD, OLED, um, LED, that doesn't matter, any kind of backlit device, the way the technology works is you have your front panel, and then depending on the technology, you have, let's say, a coloring layer. That depends on what technology is being used. And behind of all of that, you normally traditionally have a giant backlight. Now, there's different backlight technologies, but all serves the same purpose, which is that the entire background of the whole screen is actually one giant lamp. Now that lamp also flickers. It just 
flickers, flickers, flickers like crazy. That LED light also contains harmful blue light waves that actually are not good for your eyes. And the combination of that flickering and the light that is being used, and it's actually shining at you for dozens of hours per week at least, sometimes it's a dozen hours a day or more, unfortunately, and then you combine that with the decades, that has a very significant negative effect on the health aspect. So much so that there are people out there who literally cannot look at a traditional monitor. They can't use them at all. And for them, it was like the technology said, well, tough luck, you're in a minority, so you don't get to use it, which I think is a really bad thing. So that's how the usual uh, technology works. Reflective LCD has a similar kind of layers. So you have a protective layer, you have a color layer, so to speak. But instead of the backlit layer on the background, you have a highly reflective layer. So the technology itself needs to let as much light in and then reflect it back to your eyes, meaning that there's no artificial source of light here. Whatever uh, source of light that you have here is being reflected back onto you, making the monitor actually become a part of the environment. Even if you have sources of artificial light in your room that have the harmful blue light waves, once they actually reflect, they are filtered through and also minimized a little bit. So that's point number one. Point number two, power consumption is hugely, hugely lower. The average monitor, depending on the resolution, refresh rates and all these kinds of things, a modern one that's a 600 nits, they can go even up to 180 and sometimes even 200 watts. But let's say in the average and normal type of consumer, you are around 30 to 60 watts per screen. The RLCD, the SVD panel, the 32 inch panel, it's a very large panel. That one spends around five to six watts. That's a giant difference. And point number three, which is a really important one, there is zero flickering involved. There is no flickering here at all regardless of what kind of brightness or settings you have. And those three combined are a reason to very seriously take a consideration at this technology and at this product because it's an important one. I was interested to actually see what that color layer actually is like because naturally SVD is very secretive. They're very open about many things, but about the uh, actual technology of how do you color your pixels while transmitting light, naturally they're keeping that close to vest. So I fired up my little microscope just to take a peek and see what do I see. And here you will actually see how does a regular LCD panel, IPS LCD panel look like. Then you have an OLED and on both of them you will see the RGB uh, diodes per pixel and then they light up and then they do all the things. But you can see that they're very, very clearly defined. However, when I put the reflective LCD panel under the microscope, I saw a gradient, which is the first time that I've actually seen that in any of the technologies that I've seen. So it's like a complete gradient of the RGB hues, but there are no defined singular uh, yeah, points of light, so to speak. So that I don't, I genuinely don't know what it is, how it does. If some of you actually do know the origins, I'm really interested. So do shoot them down in the comments down below, because I would like to learn more, more about it, what it is. But I, at the very least, I found it very, very interesting. Uh, as a consequence of that, that indicated to me that the uh, pixelization of the image that's actually shown on this LCD is not going to be the same as on the other one. And that might mean, if it's done correctly, that the 1080p resolution on such a large panel might not be a problem. First, let's focus on the design and the build quality of the monitor itself. Well, as I indicated in the unboxing of the SVD 32-inch indoor computer, reflective LCD uh, computer monitor, it's an all-metal construction everywhere except the bezel right around on the front of the screen, which is perfectly, uh, the paint is perfectly toned between plastic and metal, so that it looks and feels the same. The only difference that you can actually see is when you put your uh, uh, skin on it, the plastic feels a little bit warmer to the touch and the metal is a little bit colder. But to all intents and purposes, this is an all-metal construction. 
It is of a very, very high quality and it feels and it looks like a premium device, which it is because its you know, price range is very, very high up. But luckily, the thinness of the design, the design itself, how it works, it's really, really gorgeous. So you just kind of observe this thing and because it's so thin and because it doesn't have a, a giant front light and because it doesn't have really, really big power uh, 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 requirements, it allows for the whole panel to be very, very light which is something that uh, I'm using a 43 inch uh, 4K Dell here for years. And I remember when I was mounting that I actually even injured myself a little bit because it's just so huge, heavy and cumbersome. It's just like a huge nightmare to do this. Not so with this little one. This one is just, you can really easily hold it with one hand and do everything else that you might need to for mounting or whatever it is. So that size is one thing, but the thinness, I cannot get over how thin and sleek that look is and with the metal it's just a gorgeous device. Is it all ideal and perfect? Well, no, there is definitely room for improvements. The my major, major thing is that there's no visa mounting uh, standard uh, available. And that I don't completely understand why would that how could that have happened <laughs> because it's a visa standard so that is a very big thing to take into consideration but that being said that mm, foot stand actually works really good if you want it on your desk however if you want it on your desk it's a 32 inch screen so it takes a lot of desk and usually people do like to have it on a um, yeah on a stand of some sort so that they can regulate the height and things like that so it is uh, far from ideal not to have a visa mount and not to have included a foot something um, foldable foot is nice but something that would solve this issue is if they would come out with um, mounting uh, stand that is compatible with this product that can mount on the holes that it already has on the back that are not visa holes but they are there and that you have actually a foot stand for this screen with adjustable height with tilting because some people might want to use it in a vertical orientation things like that ergonomic uh, considerations are very important here and yes before you go like who the hell uses 32 inch in a vertical ori orientations coders do so people in uh, development they do because vertical real estate is far more important than the horizontal one and this kind of thing would actually lend itself very nicely for that but in a current configuration there's no way you can do that the only way to do it is if SVD would come out with a dedicated foot stand with height adjustment tilt adjustment and pivot adjustment as well like a full-on nice kind of experience so that you can expand on the functionality of your 32 inch reflective LC D monitor should you need that. As it is now, right out of the box, it is rather limited. It stands on the desk really well, has a good range, but that's about it. So that's something definitely to keep in mind. The second thing is that the angle is okay up to a point, but because this is a reflective LCD panel, it might have been a nicer thing to see a more of an angle for that foot to actually go down to allow the panel to go even further down to capture more of the top light that's being reflected maybe from somewhere in your room. So that's a little bit of ergonomics and functionality. Flexibility is something that is lacking in the design itself. And a smaller thing that also, but it is there for that price premium and everything, then everything should be pretty much tip top and perfect. Um, it's a very small thing, but it does lack. There are no anti-skid uh, feet of any sort on the bottom of the screen itself. So depending on the surface that you have and how you're using it, it could end up up slipping a little bit now if you're just using that foot that's not a problem because that foot just kind of uh, stands and it doesn't allow the monitor to go around but it is something that is lacking just simple silicone or rubber feet would have been a very nice addition but at the moment it is lacking thankfully that's a super easy thing to do you just take a little silicone strip put it on the bottom and presto you're done but we're reviewing the product as it is and it's something that needs to be mentioned 
Now, one of the things that a monitor needs to have is a good access to the controls and good um, yeah, range of controls for brightness, contrast, modes, color modes, or whatever. Now, SVD does have that. The 32-inch screen does have that. But where it's placed and how it's organized is equally perplexing for me as the lack of the visa mounting option. Uh, that means that it's on the back and the, the, the buttons are not differentiated in any way. And when this is on a table and not on any kind of a stand because you can't mount it because of lack of visa thing, that means that you have to kind of reach around really, really weird and then feel for those kind of buttons. That's not such a terrible thing, but it is a 32 inch uh, screen and I believe that there should have been a better way to do this. Uh, even if the bezel was slightly uh, taller or something, but to have those buttons either on the side, well, there's no room on the side because it's so thin, but something, at least something to have offered to have a bit of a better ergonomic uh, uh, access to these things. Now, this wouldn't have been an issue if the, pro if the, if the monitor had a USB hub and you had USB connectivity to your computer, in which case they would have data communication with their monitor device, and then you would have a piece of software, and then you would just open it up on your computer and adjust it from there. But unfortunately, this one doesn't have that. So the only way to adjust the picture attributes of the screen is via those controls that are on the back, inconveniently placed, and they're a little bit confusing to use. The first point of confusion is they have a power button. So you have a power button there, and then you have a power button on the side of the monitor. Um, don't know why, but ergonomically that's a little bit of a problem because if you choose to lay the device flat on its desk, there's no recess for this, those buttons, they protrude, so they will be pressed immediately. So you have to have some kind of a different uh, situation if you choose to use your monitor flat on the desk, but that's a very rare occurrence when you will do that. But if you are one of those rare ones who would want to use it that way, something that you definitely have to be aware of to add some spacers to allow uh, the monitor not those those buttons not to be pressed by default. How do the controls work? Well, you have your plus, you have your minus, you have your power button, then you have your modes, and then you have back and all that kind of stuff. So you do have an option to change the uh, zooming, so um, aspect ratio, then you have brightness, you have contrast, and you have some color controls as well. But you will notice that I'm not showing off those pretty much at all. Only here and there, there's gonna be a couple of things. Because of the nature of the reflective LCD technology, itself. Uh, while the differences in the control is there, it, they definitely do something, it absolutely pales in comparison in significance to what your environment lighting conditions are. So yes, you do have a little bit of brightness control, yes, you have a little bit of uh, contrast control, but those are just at the best band-aids so you will not fix your lighting conditions with those controls you will not optimize them the only way the main way to do this is by optimizing your environment lighting so don't rely and that's why i did not want to rely on those controls there yes i'm mentioning they that they are there but they are you know just a slight smidge here and there not a major difference at all but it is present and that's a good thing so overall, the layout and controls, while I think it's a good thing, definitely a good thing that the controls are there, then they are pretty much necessary to be present on any screen like this. Um, I, it's um, unfortunate how they are being, how they have been placed. The ergonomics of it is unfortunate. The functionality is a little bit weird. You have to double press sometimes to actually start adjusting uh, controls. So it, it's not intuitive how it functions. And the lack of the USB connectivity and data connectivity with the monitor and the computer means that it's not possible and it will not be possible for this screen to ever in the future have a software solution that can bypass this kind of an issue. So that's something that's there. Layout controls are there, but everything else and how they're implemented, how they work and what they do is not that good nor that important. Then we get to the connectivity of the monitor itself. And as I said, it only has two things that you can plug into it. It has a power in and one HDMI, full HDMI slot in. That's it. 
no display port no mini display port no other hdmi no usb-c no usb hub either and those are not good things the placement is fine the placement functions okay i think for most part um, but one thing that i noticed is that for a very large screen that needs to be positioned somewhere in the room and depends where it needs to go the power cable is exceedingly short and that was one of the big limitations as as silly as it may sound that was a big limitation for me because i had to constantly figure out it was always too short in any kind of situation the main limitation that i had was the power cable is just way too short and i had to figure out okay where do i plug it how do i plug it extension etc etc so that part is not that good on the practicality side of things we see something that it just is uh, maybe on the side of inexperience i would believe but for a monitor like this you do need a at least double the length of the currently included uh, power cable length that it is for it to be more flexible and that it actually works better hdmi worked fine it's a nice proper slot and it holds the hdmi uh, cable well and the placement was good so i didn't really have any problems there so on the connectivity side of things there's really not much to talk about obviously there's uh, a glaring uh, lack of multiple HDMI ins uh, multiple inputs this is a 32 inch device and people do tend to use sometimes I am one of those I use two computer screens but um, that's a dual screen setup per computer and I have two computers there and have extra cables also coming from both of them when I need to hook up something uh, external and that way I can have multiple devices running on the same uh, display setup now that is not possible on this one so if I wanted to make it a permanent setup I would need to add um, HDMI splitter of some sort and then you can actually go past that so that you can have two inputs and one output into the monitor but again um, by default it's not something that's done well so i think that also shows and kind of covers a little bit on the side of inexperience of the svd uh, with indoor computer monitors at least because the needs of computer monitors are fairly specific and a short power cable and lack of multiple uh, display inputs is something that is lacking and another thing that's also lacking is obviously the usb hub now i understand that they probably wanted to keep uh, power consumption low but a lot of people a lot a lot a lot of people will use the power hub on their screen as the source where you plug in your keyboard you plug in your mouse and you plug in your usb hub usb uh, stick or whatever it may be this screen doesn't allow that and this is something that's strange because we are used to that stand that being a standard for a computer monitor for decades literally now and i don't remember the last time that i've seen actually a computer screen that didn't have at least one usb port especially not at the price range where this is it's simply a mismatch with the price with the build quality with the exclusivity with the new technology and all that but it lacks something so Mm, yeah bare bones as a usb hub on a monitor that's like a no-brainer that's something that just has to be there but in this one it's lacking so that's something that you absolutely have to keep in mind and a final thing that i think connectivity wise is definitely lacking is no speakers and no audio capability of any sort same thing as the usb hub uh people sometimes who don't care about sound but who just want to have video conferencing or you just want to have a, a office setup or something like that when you're not listening to music but you just want to have something um the, the monitor speakers are actually functional and they you they are useful to have and again we're talking about a standard like most of the computer monitors have a a speaker of some sort not so this one svd 32 inch reflective lcd does not have that now granted it's thin it's light it's all that which is great maybe you don't want uh, built-in audio speakers which is fine i would actually agree with that but at the very least there should be like an audio pass through or, or uh, the ability to hook up an audio component to it so something something to make it possible to, to have that but you don't so no audio capabilities no usb capabilities limited connectivity and limited power cable um limitations definitely limitations on the design and how the approach of the connectivity of the 32 inch reflective lcd panel has been done so far 
Okay, so now let's check out some of the outdoor uh, performance and comparison examples. I'm going to be showing how it functions on its own, how it's compared to my laptop screen. The display panel on my laptop is a 17.3 inch uh, IPS uh, LCD panel running at 144 hertz and most importantly here is 300 nits of uh, backlight uh, strength. So it is a very very strong, it's not a super strong 600 nits but 300 nits is very 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 good. And on the other hand, I'm also comparing, to it, comparing it with an e-ink uh, screen. In this case, that is a 13.3 inch the new Dasung Paperlike HD M or something it's called. So we're comparing the reflective LCD technology with the IPS LCD at 300 nits and a e-ink 13.3 inch panel. So that's what we're going to see in outdoor and indoor comparison results. All right, so it's clearly sunny outside. I did a setup, my laptop is background there. I have a keyboard set up and a mouse. So I'm just going to do some normal testing things, such as typing. So let's say that we're doing um, outdoor testing. Basically, as you can see, um, for for these kinds of normal tasks, it's it's absolutely astonishing. <laughs> I gotta say, it, it is unlike anything that I've ever seen before. So let's uh, let's get a studio setup sheet, which has a lot of. Uh, let's say here. There we go. Lots of colors, and then you can see, like absolutely lovely colors, lovely refresh rates, you have the full-on contrast, you get blacks, blacks, you get dark grays, everything's nice and sharp and clean and just just looks absolutely amazing. So um, yeah, you've already seen the video footage, so what I'm actually going to do now is, because we have semi-cloudy to sunny uh, conditions, so you have a cloud here and sunshine there, um, I'm just going to fire up uh, two different video games, like uh, Civilization Beyond Earth, which is a more, more slow but kind of busy moving thing, and then uh, Grid, which is a racing game, to actually see how it performs on, um, yeah, on, on things like that. But yeah, general use is just really, really astonishing. I'll have to remind myself not to, <laughs> not to stay here. A whole day because usually when I fire up this one it's like uh, at least four hours or so until I get to be back to normal but let's continue from last night oh my god <laughs> oh there's some tearing here that's mainly because I'm not using v-sync so there's definitely side tearing let me just uh, see if that is up to v-sync okay so i had it at 144 hertz which is too much so let's switch to 60 hertz with v-sync on and let's try now all right and now it's there's still some small tearing here and there but not as bad as it was no 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 it's still there all right so we do have some kind of tearing this is not something that happens on a another display all right so gaming wise that's something that you definitely have to kind of keep in mind and not something i noticed in regular use yeah, there you go. You could see a little bit of tearing there, here and there. Maybe it's just um, Civilization because it has a weird engine. So we'll see in a different game if I get the same problem or not. So yeah, but everything else looks really pretty. Zooms in, does everything that you would expect it to. And I am not going to play a move simply because yeah, there's a whole thing going on here, which is like an ongoing thing. So I have to strategize. But anyway, um, so we get this weird tearing going on. 
All right, so let's uh, exit. All right, let's uh, start up the grid legends. Let's just um, drive this. Yeah, the colors are gorgeous. So far, I'm not seeing any tearing. Nope, no tearing whatsoever. No tearing, no noticeable lag that bugs me. Some small lag, so if I was playing an FPS, this would bug me. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of lag. But for this type of game, it doesn't matter. And definitely no tearing of any kind. So that leads me uh, to believe that it has to do something with the um, graphics engine of the Beyond Earth. Because there's obviously not, not a shred of tearing happening here. You know what? I never thought that I'd be able to do gaming outdoors in sunshine. Like, for decades, that's something that you've associated with dark rooms pale complexions, things like that. No more nerds rejoice. You can play games and be in the sunshine. No more excuses. Except for the, of course, the enormous price tag. I'm just gonna finish the race, because it's fun. Oh, that's... <laughs> Oh, wow, there's one more lap. <laughs> cool. So yeah, no tearing that it can see. Let me see in a replay, because that one has different uh, views. Nope, no tearing. Well, let's see. Nope, the camera is now moving side to side. We have super fast panning. Absolutely no tearing whatsoever. It just looks really good. I could get used to playing like this. <laughs> like, to be honest, I definitely could get used to playing like this. This is really cool. All right, let's uh, let's try something else. All right, let's get to work side of things. Uh, so now I'm in 3ds Max, and let's see uh, this. Oh, this is not Alt. This is Alt. Okay, there we go. So. This is a really weird sensation, I gotta say, because, um, there we go, so some shadows now, because now there's a cloud, I don't have a problem in working, I don't have a problem in any of it really, <laughs> it's just working the way it should, everything is nice and clean, I can scrub normally, can I check my curves and see where they are? Yep, I can definitely work with my curve editor. Everything is perfect. So, so unbelievably, and now we're like in sh in a cloud uh, kind of coverage. So cloudy type of situation, and yeah, it, it's just working. And I I can't believe that it's actually possible to to work outside. This is really, really, really interesting again. Uh, one thing, I don't know how much camera will see, will see it, but the darker the conditions are, more of the reflectivity you will see. So when it was fully sunlight, I didn't see any reflections at all. Now when we have this big cloud coming over, I am starting to see some, but nowhere near the amount that you actually see on a regular screen. 
and no glare or anything like that so it still beats the regular screen by by a whole mile all right and now i have a setup where this and this display this is the latest dosung so representing e-ink technology this is our traditional lcd at the maximum brightness and this is the reflective lcd the svd display um, these two are mirrored this one is not but i'll just drag the same thing over so that you can see how it looks like as you can see like there's really no competition between the reflective lcd technology and the e-ink um, it's just not feasible for that kind of work there's there's a huge amount of limitations and you know while it's good and it does have its applications on its own and when compared with other ink displays but the ink technology just itself let's disregard the device that's the one they have here when compared to the reflective lcd technology it's just a very different thing i mean there's really no comparison um now of course if i drag this over to the regular display i'm just gonna move out of frame so that you can see here the thing is that i can't even see my cursor that's how dark it is i'm trying to see there we go so yeah this is this is how the regular display looks like and this is how it looks here so this is not something that i would ever use on an e-ink display i mean uh, yes it it can show things which is impressive but as soon as you start playing you know the ghosting and everything for an e-ink display i actually find this really impressive i i didn't think that it would be able to do something like that plus i can probably make it go fastest there we go so this is the fastest option clear so yeah you can you can definitely get it to be somewhat smoothish but the problem is the ghosting it's just becoming really weird and the lack of contrast so even in direct sunlight because when you want when you need an ink display to run fast you lose contrast and then it becomes kind of pale and I have a huge amount of glare, which I'm going to actually show and compare. So again, in, in, even in this one, it just, there's really no comparison with any other technology that we currently have. And here I am doing handheld guerrilla style. And this is the e-ink, uh, in this case, Dasung uh, paper-like, the new one. This is the sun reflectivity that we get on it. This is the traditional lcd on my laptop that's the sun glare that i get here and this is the sun glare that i get in the same exact room this room <laughs> same exact conditions on the svd 32 inch panel so we got this this versus this um yeah i don't know about you guys but that's that's quite something all right, and here we have an indoor setup. So I have, this is like a semi-light, normal type of light uh, condition. And I do have it angled a little bit more towards the windows, simply because that's what this kind of panel really wants you to do. So it's a literally a complete 180 uh, compared to what we are used to with traditional displays and even now when it's not directly facing it i am able to work normally now it's not as good as it was outside but it's absolutely usable for these kinds of things and these are demanding things you know so um let's try and see here maybe like this and i'm not used to this keyboard for 3ds max but yeah seems to be working just fine and if we go like this yeah it's definitely able to deal with all of these things without a hitch and you can see it compared to the regular display this one is now at around 
this is half this is one step below half and that's where we have like a similar type of uh, um, let's say brightness even though it's a little bit different now the key differences that i can definitely see here is what i also noticed um outdoors is that the darker the conditions are more reflections you see and they're kind of sharp reflections so they're not glary they're not like this uh, uh, covering the entire surface but they are definitely uh, defined uh, reflections and I can see clearly if I look into the angle here I can see clearly the clouds and things like that it's not really distracting me a whole lot uh, and the thing is that it's the opposite the brighter it gets less reflections you get which is a whole weird kind of thing but darker you get more reflections you see so that's something that you do have to kind of keep in mind um, which is definitely not something that you have on this one. But on this one, I also get some glaring reflections, but I can, you know, kind of pump up the brightness and then it burns my retinas. That being said, the other difference that I see is the coloration. So there's almost like, I'm going to call this the matrix screen, because there's like um, a green tint that I do like, similar, very similar to the green tint that was used on Matrix uh, Reloaded, for example. That whole movie has um, um, yeah, color correction in the green, which makes sense when you are in the Matrix. And that's what this uh, screen also has. You can clearly see that when you're comparing the the gray scale here, because this is a pure gray color, you can see that we have this kind of a green tint happening when we are in in semi semi you know kind of cloudy or indirect lighting conditions shall I call it like that so uh, for me definitely that's not a big deal at all actually I quite find it quite pleasing but that does mean that if you are relying on colors and you want a color calibrated screen this is not it this is well, naturally it can't be it because it is uh the colors will vary on the shades on the angle that you're looking at and all that kind of stuff so if you're looking for perfect color uniformity perfect white uniformity perfect black uniformity and that's what your work really relies on i don't think the reflective lcd technology is the one that's meant to do that it's meant to do office work normal regular day work even this is like stretching it way too far but it is able to actually do it without a problem so now let's give it something that it is supposed to be able to handle and let's see how dark do we need to get again something this is half a bit well it's kind of like as it's like uh, now my um, laptop is on half, the backlight is on half of the strength. And when I'm using it for <laughs> what it's supposed to be used and what it's most likely to be used, which is office work for typing and doing that kind of stuff, then it most definitely works. So uh, let's see here, let's give it a number two. I'm gonna fill this out later, but just this is just a small uh, example. But I gotta say, even though it's darker and I do see some reflections and things like that, when I'm flipping my eyes between this and this, um, the, the, the thing that the camera can't capture is just how big of a difference it is when the thing is not glowing at you. It's just a huge, huge difference. And yes, 32 inches is a really, really large panel. So that's a large size but and does require space however you do have uh 
the benefit of being able to put it quite far away from you and have the distance as well and let your eyes kind of rest. It's, it's just incredibly comfortable to work with this. So let's see that uh, sheet here. I mean, I really don't see any problems working with this unless, as I said, it's like photography working and I need to do color related things. Um, so if it's not color sensitive uh, for, for super precise colors, like calibrated colors, everything else, I don't see a problem at all. I mean, on the contrary, I find it, again, even this kind of thing, I find it far, far more pleasing than looking at the screen. And even after, like, just after a couple of minutes of using this, darting your uh, eyes back to a normal screen, you immediately feel a kind of a sharper pain that goes into behind of your eye. <laughs> it's like somebody points really tiny needles, but they do poke tiny needles into your eyes when they start looking at the regular screen. And for me, majority of work that I personally do is not color uh, dependent. Of course, there are areas when I am completely color dependent, and for that you use other panels, but you know, 90% of the time or 80% of the time for me is this is something that I could most definitely use. And let's see if I angle it more, you get more light. That's the benefit. So more I angle it towards the <laughs> sorts of the screen, sort of the light, brighter it becomes, more contrast you get, less reflections you get and everything, which is really, really interesting thing to see. All right, so let's uh, get it back to where it was. And now let's fire up a, a, a what was the other thing that we're testing? Uh, a video game. Yes, of course, let's try that. All right, so now outside we have cloud uh, coverage. So we're not in direct sunlight, but hopefully that's gonna change soon. But then again, you can see how it looks like in there. So let's just do yet another uh, quick race see how that goes and you can clearly see the bluish there the greenish tint here so that greenish tint is ever present but I think it's gonna be a personal preference but for me I actually like it I don't mind it at all it actually feels a little bit more natural um, it gives me that again that movie like quality there's yes definitely colors pop more on the other one but I don't know why I have no idea why <laughs> <laughs> but I do prefer the way this looks like. I'm gonna keep on racing until hopefully some sunshine comes out. That was a big bump because I'd like to see what the difference is, because now, like, we have a full-on cloud. And even so, it's totally fine. And I get to see more details if I'm looking at the dashboard, for example, this screen versus the traditional screen, but I'll see that on more on the footage. But yeah, for sure, I like how it looks like better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. Well, that was unexpected. Uh huh, I think we're getting some sun back out. It's coming back and you get a little bit, yeah, definitely. It's basically how much sunshine you have or how much light you have. It's the relationship between the reflections and the details of the images. Uh, apologies for that. Okay, maybe I should do all of my reviews from now on with just playing games. I like that a lot. Kind of beats writing for one hour. I would much rather play for one hour and then give a verdict. Anyway, let's look at the uh, replay. So yeah, you can definitely see the greenish tint for sure, 
but you can see that there's no tearing and now we have kind of same yeah it is kind of uh, uh, sunlight outside so i'm getting okay results here and if i turn it even more then you get yeah pretty much excellent image so if you are able to actually position this screen in such a way that it's opposite of your uh, window, then you're just gonna have, which is like a complete opposite of what you normally would do and how normally you would organize your office, um, then, then you're gonna have the absolute best results because it's incredible how little gives you how much um, in, this, in this panel or in this technology. And this is really, really interesting. So, for example, let's angle it like this, and then you still usable, definitely usable and all good. It's just that it's a little bit darker. So, very, very, very nice indeed. That's not something that I uh, expected at all. All right, so let's, uh, let's do the comparative indoor with the e-ink uh, displays as well, and wrap up the comparisons there. All right, so here we go. Same setup as before. Uh, I forgot to mention outside the front light was off on the e-ink display and is off now as well because that's the whole point to kind of compare what we can see. But right off the bat, you see that even with um, Mira, the books Mira, the new Dasung or the new panels obviously have that kind of a issue here that's kind of blinking around and that uh, goes away in different modes but i'm not gonna use a different mode because it's too it's a video mode that's not really good for that kind of thing so i'm just kind of comparing this one and we're now back into somewhat cloudy-ish conditions um, but you can see yeah how this works let's make it a faster or so in video mode you don't have that but the video degradation, as you can see, the ghosting is too much. Of course, on the uh, reflective LCD, you do not have that issue at all. So let's go back to a graphics mode, which is not happy with this at all. There we go. Maybe something like this. All right. So definitely, if I play here, the air LCD, uh, reflective LCD technology wins hands down over the e-ink. Uh, however, when we compare it with the normal display, well, you get a lot of glare. So here I would be forced to increase, yeah, to the maximum, which is gonna increase the battery consumption and which is going to harm my eyes and it becomes increasingly more uh, uncomfortable so there's definitely that kind of a difference and in here as well if you know the conditions are less than optimal i'm most definitely preferring at least for 3ds max non-color related working i do prefer the reflective lcd let's go back to something far more realistic what these devices are going to be used for which is excel workflow and here obviously we get the color advantage of the reflective lcd and here you can adjust it it's okay it's perfectly fine and definitely brighter so um, as far as the brightness goes and capturing the sunlight the e-ink technology is brighter whiter and yeah there's no no comparison for sure uh, but that being said uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I prefer this one again. So it will be, it will depend on the use case scenario for sure. And if we, of course, go back to here, then you have the most color contrast and everything, but also a little bit more glare. And yeah, the glariness is the thing that's always kind of a thing. So the, the SVD 32 inch uh, monitor is not clearing at all but it does have sharper reflections than either of these so that is something that's definitely true and uh, most often we will use this for I'm trying to find my cursor almost impossible to see it on the e-ink display there we go and here we have this kind of a thing 
and the sheer size of course wins but if we equalize that yeah so let's switch it to a different mode which is a text mode okay so this is text mode and let's clear that out nice and clean definitely uh, whites are whiter and you have more contrast between black and white on the e-ink screen but that being said the overall usability impression again for me it's there's no comparison because the uh, yeah the 32 inch uh, size and the deep reflective LCD technology in itself it's just something that works as a balance it's definitely a compromise between this and this that's why it's in the middle and I do like it. I like it more than this, and I like it definitely more than this. So that's what I did not expect, is that I would like it more than the traditional LCD. That's something I most definitely did not expect, that it would work so, so well. So yeah, there you go. So that's how the reflective LCD performs and looks like in uh, indoor kind of uh, next to the window, side to the window, not directly facing the window type of conditions. Um, not as bright as an e-ink display, but definitely bright enough to make it completely usable. Now, uh, one of the questions that I received was about uh, how does it perform, how does the monitor perform in coding environment? So I've actually fired up the, uh, yeah, just the Visual Basic here, and I tried out the light and the dark theme. And while both work in well uh, lit conditions, the dark lit, uh, the dark theme can work and it's working fine. I do prefer and I would uh, recommend the uh, white theme here to actually, uh, because the visibility and the contrast is just a little bit higher and it's more forgiving if you are in relatively not well lit conditions you can still work and you can still see things normally while if I used a dark theme then you would struggle in some corners if it's a little bit too dark or not because then again it's a very large panel etc etc but overall um, it's 60 Hertz it's 1080p and it's nice and crispy and it's nice and large and you can just work on it and it was a pleasure to work on definitely a pleasure to work on um, switch it to a light theme and just it, it, it was just all good so nothing bad there like an uh, any other text uh, editor or anything like that this is a normal LCD screen it's just not glowing at you it's just simply using the uh, ambient light and reflecting it back to you now that being being said, I don't know if you've already noticed this, but there's something that we need to kind of uh, consider here. I don't know how else to call it other than silvering effect, which means that depending on the angle that the viewing angle of this one, because it is a reflective uh, panel behind, this is something that will pop out in white color only or the bright colors, but on the white color mainly, this is something that you might actually notice. And when you code and you use a light theme, that's something that actually is uh, the situation where I noticed it most. Now it's not really distracting, it's just unusual. The white pixels are not white, they are more kind of silvery, it's difficult to explain because depending on your viewing angle they are different shades of white and you get you perceive this slight silvering effect now this is not shiny this is not distracting or anything like that but it is important to note that you don't get a pure white in indoor conditions unless you have like ridiculously high lighting in that room you will get that silvering effect however when you're talking about super well lit conditions and you're not relying on an artificial light and you have it like for example placed opposite of a window or if you're working outside then the panel has well enough light to actually reflect it for the white pixels to become truly white and not that kind of mixed in between kind of a thing. I was never bothered by it but it's something to uh, be aware of because some people may be kind of bothered by it. I try to capture it with a camera so that you can see what I'm talking about and please do be aware that this is an issue only when your lighting conditions are not optimal and not adequate as soon as you get into an option where the monitor has more than plenty enough uh, light then that issue is no longer present and white pixels are white pixels indeed